You look great in that Fabre. Well, not bad. I haven't seen you in a, in a long time. Do you remember where we know each other from? Yes, you do. I do. One, One day, day at a time. time. We did Great all show. the PR, and you handled mm -hmm. all those wonderful things for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Wonderful show. Yes. And do you still you hear from some of those people yes, from time Yes, Bonnie to time? and yeah. Valerie and, and Shelly, my niece, Shelly mm -hmm. Fabre, my niece. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Every time I hear her name, I want to sing Johnny Angel. She'll kill you. That's a, <laughs> yes, I know. She said that to me. Yes. She has said that to me before, so yes. I wouldn't say that to her directly. You, you know what I love? most about you. Oh, thank you. What? I love that y you have a career that has spanned stage, mm -hmm. television, mm -hmm. film, mm -hmm. and now what may be the pinnacle of your career here at Lamac and Company Live, which everyone yeah, this is, is it. I, I, I've been about. working towards this all my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, when to we, us. Oh, yes. You can, cheers. Do you know why people tip glasses and things like that? Uh -oh. Have you got a couple of minutes for me to yeah, tell you? Yeah. In the old days, when it was customary for people to poison each other, they would drop poison in the glasses. What they did is they would fill the wine glasses half full. That's so that they could pour the wine back and forth around the table. And really? pour your coffee into mine, like, or like you're pouring wine into mine. Go ahead, right. pour it. Just really, really try pour to pour it. it. Yeah. Try to pour it. I trust you. That's ah. where that comes from, you see. Huh. But we still do that because we aren't so far removed from poisoning each other. Well, no, so. well, but this is Beverly Hills. I, mean, I know. Well, <laughs> it's more upscale you really poisoning. Need that, right? yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, mm. good coffee. Mm. I asked around about you. I mean, I knew a little about you, <gasps> but I yeah. asked around about you. And what is very interesting to me is that there's nobody that will say anything bad about you. Everybody, you are like one of the most loved. Maybe someone will call in. <laughs> I'd like to know. <laughs> Everybody says great things about you. Isn't that nice? That's Isn't very that lovely? Nice. That's really lovely. You know, yes. sometimes there's always like little dirt, you know, you hear like little side stuff, but nothing. But nothing. I'm really not a Pollyanna. No. What you see is what you get. Yes. I am me. But you know, there's, um, there's a spunk to you. Which is in, in, in what I do want to talk to you about when we sort of get into mm -hmm. to passions and things that sort of drive you other yes. than show business. Yes. But what you do always seems to come from the heart. And w one of the other things that I love most is that unlike a lot of quote-unquote Hollywood people, you're not visible at every fundraiser, at every benefit. You seem to choose your causes very carefully. I do the carefully. House Here Institute benefit. Mm -hmm. I help organize that and put it on. We help get it started because hearing loss is one of my great uh, projects yes. that I'm interested yes. in. That's the big benefit that I do every year. Uh -huh. But very little else, which means that when you lend your name to something, when you get behind a cause... I really do it. It's from the heart. Mm -hmm. Now, you have long been identified with, um, with rights for the hearing disabled, and, and, and that wasn't really the first thing on your mind when we said, please come talk and let's see what, what is on your mind the most these days. And really, what, well, what did I say at that moment? Because I think you said it depends it was on what you caught me. At you the know. day of, yeah, yes, I think uh -huh. it had something to do with a the Neiman Marcus one day sale, which was uh, passed. Oh, yes, so yes, that was I we lost that. About yes, that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the other issue had to do with something that I have not heard a lot about and didn't know a lot about until we started checking into it, which is this issue of of widows' rights, ah, well, which see? is taxes, which is a situation... In Did you see the color come up <laughs> in my face? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. a, and it was new for us. We were in researching, found ourselves very educated because it's not anything one would know about unless one were faced with the situation. Well, what, what brought you to that? Okay, 17 years ago, and it doesn't seem that long, my husband walked across the room, sat down and died. And we had planned how we were going to spend the year 2000 together. He was a very young man, and we had our, what we thought was most of our life ahead of us. And at that moment, my life turned 180 degrees, and I faced the reality of what it means to have someone that you are tied to, in love with, and married to, and part of your life, leave you, die, go off. And the catastrophic things that happened to you financially at that, mm -hmm. at that moment not just tomorrow, but at that moment. Uh, I found myself going into the bank the next day to write a check, and I heard this strange woman, which turned out to be me, saying, what do you mean I can't, the, this check, this account is no good. Just because my husband died, I can't use this. And they said, no, 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 nothing you have is any good with his name on it anymore, as though he had never existed. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, the uh, inheritance tax was uh, only a $60,000 deductible. Well, I mean, you pay almost that for a car. 
mm-hmm. these days, okay? And in those days, that, that wasn't very much money either to, to be able to deduct. Mm-hmm. And so you pay tax over, over that. Let's okay. go back up a little bit because yeah. you're hitting upon some important things that yeah. we, uh, right. we really I want to talk about because I, okay. I am interested and I think maybe we uh, educate each yeah, other a little it. bit. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> That's all right. I love that. Um, the, the first emotion through all of that, and, and it's kind of unfair because I, I, I guess really before you deal with the shock or a little bit after, there's the anger that sets in because, of course, these things happen and you're not prepared. I still haven't forgiven him. And, yeah. and uh, you want everyone, you want life to cooperate. But see, one of our big doesn't. problems in this whole world, Brad, in our country, is that the media, the advertising, our whole society in the last 50 years has become youth-oriented. One must never go past the age of 35, and we do everything we can. We suck it in and suck it up and fix it up and dye it up and do everything we can to stay 35, at least 30, maybe 36, okay? So that we don't face the reality of getting old and have dignity applied to getting old. One out of four people who die is under the age of 45. One out of four. And yet anybody under the age of 45 never prepares for that. I don't think anybody ever prepares. Unfortunately, That's what we I'm may saying. think that we do. And we of don't. course, now that we have the, the, the ugly and unfortunate statistics with AIDS and cancer and other I kinds do. of things, yeah. you know, See? it's affecting, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's affecting mm-hmm. uh, uh, the longevity. So the, even when you said you and your husband made plans to be together through the year 2000, it's a, it, 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 it is a wonderful yet uh, wonderful thought, yet one that shocks us by now, nowadays statistics, which is that it's ten years. we, but you know, th- used to be, at least when I was a kid, mm-hmm. old age, you know, you grew up, you saved mm-hmm. your money, you got, yeah. but it's not guaranteed to anybody anymore, mm-hmm. so things, sometimes well, a shoe gets on the other foot. Nothing is really guaranteed to us anymore, but the thing that really ticked me off beyond bearing was the fact that when my husband and I married, he had given most of everything to his first wife and his first family, and that was right, that was fair. And then when I met him and we married, he came to me with his car and his clothes. I mean, that was, that was it. Everything that we had was mine. House, everything. Everything that I owned was mine. When we married the, in California, the community property state, everything became ours. Mm-hmm. And when he died not too many years later, I had to buy back his half of everything that had been mine to begin with. And I thought that was a really a crock. I thought that was something terrible. I thought inheritance tax was something awful, and I thought it was extremely unfair, and I still do, and I'm fighting to get rid of the inheritance tax. Hello, you are on Lamack and Company Live. Hello. Hello. Hi, who's this? Uh, my name is Shelley Fabre, and I'm calling to talk to Nanette Fabre. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shelley. How come you're watching this wonderful show? Well, Ed and Ed, hello. I'm just sitting here looking at some television, and, well, I don't know. There you are. And I thought, well, there's this number flashing. There you are. I simply have to call and say hello. Yes. Hi, darling. Oh, hi, Shelley. Is that Brad? Yes. Hello, Brad. How are you? I'm fine. I haven't talked to you in so long. I know. It's been a long time. And what a lovely new show. Well, thank you and very stuff. much. I'm happy to be doing it and having a good time. But Isn't the main reason for my calling is to say to everybody who is watching tonight that they are watching and listening a really remarkable human being, as I'm sure they've already ascertained. By he really is. Show. <laughs> he is um, one of a kind. She is loving and beautiful mm. and full of life and full of spirit. Yeah, no, and she so has right. been an incredible influence too. in my life. And I yeah. love her beyond words. And I thought, well, this is a perfect forum to just call and say oh, that. Aren't you sweet? We okay. have to, Shelly, darling Shelly, <laughs> we have to have... I can hear you, Aunt Nanette, can you... <laughs> you can't hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay, uh, you have to come back and do the show about my, my darling Elsa, your mother, and about the problems of Alzheimer's, which I'm sure that he mm. would like to talk to you about. Very uh, that's one of the things that Shelley is very much. involved in. We, we, you should have a whole program about that because We've it's well, very current. Uh, uh, God bless you, Aunt Nanette. That's something that I would love to do. And Brad, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, please, you're please. Here, I will say that. Yes, it is. Um, in um, fact, we're Aunt talking Annette, about sister Shelley. Law and my mother, uh, Elsa Fabre, does have Alzheimer's, and it is. Um, in the last two years, I've become incredibly involved in the organization and. And it is something that I think that um, people need to know about. And if there's ever an opportunity, I would love to come into your show and talk about it. Oh, Shelley, yes, ma'am. We're talking at uh, the 
overall theme about this program, except that I keep digressing, is that we were, want to talk about inheritance taxes and the problems about taxing taxes and money. And you are running, you and uh, uh, my other niece, your sister Smokey, are running into the problem with Elsa, who now has Alzheimer's and can't communicate. And how does one handle the money situation in this kind of a catastrophic situation? And they have run into all kinds of terrible financial problems. And what the government does to them in order to get hold of the money, and Elsa is unable to do anything about it. They take basically the control oh, out of. Uh, that's what absolutely you do with your correct. Phone. So that you really should come and. I'm sorry, Brad. What'd you say? No, I, I, I'm very much interested in talking to you about that. My grandparents actually both had Alzheimer's, and I know the struggle that my family went through in trying to take care of all of those finances while it, they still could. We'll do a yes. show on that. Yes, it'd be, it'd be well, very worthwhile. That would worthwhile. be great. I would be, yeah. um, uh, for my mother's um, case and for anybody else out there who's listening, that's something that, uh, if you want me to, Brad, I'd be happy to come on and talk I would, about our uh, Smokies and my personal experience. And I would love that, Shelley. Now, I want to ask you one question. Sure. This is my only Hollywood question. Okay. And then I'll let you go. All right. The, the people... Yes. Yes. Coach's number is, is no, is no, no. That wasn't it. Oh well, yes, well, yes. Do you know how much we had to pay her? I'm sure to be able to call the show. No. Um, oh. People often want to know you are related, but the name it was really Nanette. Yes. You changed your name. I changed it. Yes. Well, I'll let Aunt Nanette tell you that Fellas story. Too. But okay. yes, of, I what I will say is that yes, we absolutely are related. Uh, Aunt Nanette is my aunt. She is my father's sister. My father has passed away. My father died in 1977, but Aunt Nanette is absolutely my aunt, and yes, we do spell our names differently. I'll let Aunt Nanette tell you that story. And another thing just to say is that uh, when I said earlier that Aunt Nanette has been such a, a force in my life, just uh, we've shared so many things that have been sad and, and also things that have been happy, which is what happens in a family. But one of the happiest things is that when I married my husband, Mike Farrell, in 1984, Aunt Nanette, um, thrillingly, as far as we were concerned, asked us to be married in her garden at, uh, at Sunset on New Year's oh. Eve of 1984, and it's one of mm. the happiest uh, times that I can ever imagine. And Shelley, I've never again, had a publicly, I'd like to say thank I've you. I've never had a Nanette, chance to tell you so this, oh. Shelley. I've never had a chance to tell you this. I stood out at the end of my long driveway out in the pr on our private road and fought off the press, and I didn't tell them that if they had gone around on Sunset, they could have gotten all the pictures they wanted. Well, God love you. So anybody listening to this kn knows another reason why I love her. Another yeah. <laughs> scoop. Yeah. Uh, first. All right, go back. Shelly, thank you, honey. And I, we'll, go, we'll call you and get you in here. That would be great, Brad. I'd love to do it. Congratulations on your show, Aunt Thanks. Nanette. I love you with all my heart. Love you too. And have a great rest of the show, and I'll talk to you both later. Thank there's no more, you. There's no more time, but that's okay. okay. Bye. <laughs> she does. Oh, yes. What a lovely lady. Yes, she's, she's exactly what you see. She's um, it not only depends uh, what you pay and, and what you owe and what is expected of you uh, in the state that you die, but also the county you die in. It, it is more expensive to die in Los Angeles. It's yes. the cheapest place you can go to kick it is in San Francisco. See? And the county taxes vary place by place. We also found that, interestingly enough, that inheritance kind of taxes it, it, if somebody leaves you money it's very similar to what you do if you win money on a game show or the lottery the government taxes you very similarly in those in those situations um, which I don't know if you know that much about that but other researchers in in this whole picture have told us that one of the best things that people in that situation can do is when you do your financial planning it is it is a wise idea to always consult an attorney in putting the right papers to get joint Please. joint yes. uh, is it yes. ten ownership on well, all documents you, yes, which yes. you didn't have. Yeah, but here's so. what happens now, and much of this you can thank me for because when my husband died, I went out at, all, all across the country and fought for some of these rights that we have. I fought to get it raised from sixty thousand to six hundred. I was trying to get rid of it, but they took it up to six hundred thousand. Another benefit that came out of this big fight that I started, I didn't do it all, but I started it and it kind of snowballed around the country and widowed people, men and women, stood up and fought for this, wrote their senators and their congressmen and got the changes. One of the major changes is that a husband or wife, whoever dies, can leave the money to the surviving mate uh, without tax. You can pass that along now. That's an enormous, enormous help. They also have the new things where you can 
uh, uh, live in that house. There are many good things, but we really must get rid of the inheritance tax period. And I want to ask somebody out there, if you know this, please call us and tell us this. What percent of the federal government's tax money is earned through inheritance tax? I think it's like about a fraction of what the federal government gets from the inheritance tax. It is so small. It well, is so think that because I don't. I, I, I imagine there's small. a lot of people out there who, when it comes time for the untimely, there, particularly in this economy, there aren't a lot of people with that much money that have to worry about that. So the amount of money that gets that gets taxed. Yes. But even if it's a small, it doesn't matter the amount. But what Brad, matters is here, the stress. Here's, here's what's happened in this life. There is a basic law in this country says that there shall be no double taxation, okay? Mm -hmm. They tax something when they grow it and when they buy it and when they make it and when they sell it. And then they tax us every year to keep it in our house and use it. And then they tax us one more time when we die and want to leave it to somebody. Now, if that isn't double taxation, I don't know what it is. But our country was based on the foundation that go west, young man, and have a home or go someplace. Your ho home is a person's castle. Why should we not have the right in this country to work all of our lives to build an estate? To, when I mean an estate, a house and a car and whatever it may be, why should we spend all of our lives that we cannot afford to leave it to the people we would like to give mm -hmm. it to? I think that's a criminal assumption on the government's part. Are you familiar with uh, what is now, I think, gaining some popularity called the living wills? Oh, yes, living now, trust. That is yes, making mm -hmm. it a little easier if people are aware of it, but not that many people are. It, it takes a little bit of an edge, or it is just, that a misnomer? It, no, yeah, well, what it does is it, it helps you bypass some of the costs. It, it keeps it out of probate and something like that. But you still have to pay the tax. There is no way that you're going to escape the tax. You, you, the tax what do they is say? Nothing certain but death, death and taxes. taxes. Well, which the, is both see, you true. know, I'm going to get to two ways: <laughs> death and taxes. So I, I'm, my, my fight is small. Mm -hmm. Just get rid of that little. And I wish somebody'd call in, some smart person, and tell us what that percentage mm -hmm. is of the federal government. What, like what the little that. bit they I'd earn like from that. inheritance tax? Because in, in all of the, the research that we did, you know, we found statistics of, you know, how much that they take, and which is what oh, I said, you know, wait, a lot, wait. just like game shows. Wait, wait, wait. You have wait. something. Oh, you know, I have something. I'm so glad that you came here today. 1993. Would you like to know what they have in plan for us in 1993? Yes. For dying, it says here. Estate rate schedule. Mm -hmm. For those who die. Okay. If, let's take, say if you have over $100,000 in your estate, mm -hmm. but not over $150,000, mm -hmm. there's $50,000 in there, you will pay right up front 20, to almost $25,000, which is mm -hmm. like a quarter of it. Okay, but here's the kicker, plus 30% of the excess of such amount over $100,000. In other words, you'll pay one quarter of $100,000, and then you're going to pay 30% of the 50%. Almost half of the fifty percent, fifty thousand is left. Yeah. I mean, and when you get down into the million, million, you can't imagine what they do. They say, "Let's have it all, baby." You know, I mean, it's just, it's terrible. It, it, it's terrible that we we can't, we can't have money to give to our children and to our and to our people that we care about. This issue is obviously we said this before, is not a new one to you. You did an interview in the Los Angeles Times in 1985, mm -hmm. which you were vocal and I'm always vocal. angry, <laughs> yes. which is great. Yes. What, any fallout from that? Now, here we are six years later. But that kind of exposure, that kind of, again, this comes back to what I, we talked about briefly in the beginning, which is using you know, you, your visibility when you've chosen to put it behind an issue is, is an issue of passion. You've always yes. spoken from yes. from the yes. heart. In getting those words out, do you see that there's been any any little difference made in people that talk to you, say, yes, I'm with you, I yes, support you? Yes, I, I do lecture tours all around the country. And I talk about the problems of getting older because I am older and we're all going to get older. But I talk about this. I talk about the fact that uh, and try to get the people that I talk to to stand up for their rights. and, and if they resent being called a senior citizen, s do something about it. Think of a better term. Uh, stand up and fight for the inheritance. Uh, stand up and fight for the taxes. Do you know that the taxes are different from state to state? Yes. You mentioned that. Yes. But let me just give you a quick example of something that I found out when I was traveling around. A young couple had married and then divorced. They both remarried and she moved to another state. 
they had no children at that in their, out of their first marriage. Her, she's now remarried and moved to another state. Her father died and left her a very large inheritance. And her ex-husband, who had remarried and was living in the first state where they had been married, sued her for her inheritance and got it. Because the, uh, the tax laws in that state said that when they married, she became his chattel. Mm. She was his thing, the old English law. Oh, gosh, we're running Excuse out of time. Me, checks out. Two okay. coffees? OK, thank you. I'll deal with you thank in you. a minute. Thank you. <laughs> she was his thing. And anything that she ever had or inherited would be his in perpetuity. And so by that state's law, he had the right to sue for her inheritance and got it, and got it. It pays you in wherever you live mm -hmm. to find out what the tax laws are in your state. And it, it pays to put up a fight and to understand, well, she couldn't I think, anything about you know, it, that it, it don't just take what people say as that this is what it has yeah. to be. Other thing that I think is very important for us to stress to uh, anybody who's in this situation or anyone who wants to just prepare for when they may be in the situation, and, and, and everyone we asked said this, don't think for one minute that you can do this on your own, even if you, you take... If it takes a little bit of money to go to a probate attorney a, and have them a, a good really one. good attorney will, for, it's will write it. you a wonderful will for fifty or a hundred dollars and save you thousands, mm -hmm. save you thousands. You mustn't do it yourself. You so know? that I think has to be part of what yes. all of the message. Or if is. you don't have the time, go in and write a, what they call a holographic will. Mm -hmm. Just just write something down. Boy, you, you know, we're going to get us out of here. What is this? I yeah. invited you for dinner and coffee. Yes. We're closing right now, sir. Yeah. Oh, but it's wonderful. it's not even nine o'clock. The kitchen closes about 49, 8.45. I okay. promised you dinner. I think that we should go like... Well, I should think so. To you ships. Should we go to ships and have a little toast? Go, go someplace <laughs> and continue our talk about it.